Hey hackers, Blue Cosmo from CCS here. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today is the kind of like the release hole, I guess, the release hole, the reveal. Oh my god. Uh, the reveal of the newest course from Cosmodio. I'm sorry, my hair looks so weird. What? All right. Anyway, um, yeah, so this is the introduction to ethical hacking course. I have been so excited to release this course. I have been waiting to release this course because we needed to do it in order of like chronological order of how you're supposed to learn stuff so first there was introduction introduction to cybersecurity, then there's linux fundamentals um then there's programming stuff you want to do in that cryptography and such and now there's ethical hacking finally i was super excited to put this course out so i really hope you guys enjoy it now real quick if you're watching this on youtube go on cosmodiumcs.com courses and watch this course for free on the website um, hopefully it's free, uh, <laughs> um, but no, it's without ads, it's on the website and there's so many more resources so much more orientation and such. Uh, so definitely check it out on the website. Now, enough bluffing, enough halting, enough wasting your time. Let's jump into the course. Uh, delay. Anyways, yes. Introduction to ethical hacking, um, created by me, of course, from the company of Cosmodium Cybersecurity, which is us. Super cool. Um, so what are we going to learn? Uh, this course will teach you everything from the prerequisites of ethical hacking uh, to the skills you need. Uh, you will learn the difference between red teaming and blue penetration testers, and you'll learn how to perform different tests for reconnaissance, networking, exploitation, um, even about legal stuff and reporting, a bunch of cool stuff on this course. Super excited to, to finally reveal it to you. All right, so before we begin, who the heck is this guy talking and you know yelling at me through the camera? Um, yeah. Hi, my name's Chris, also known as Blue Cosmo. Um, you probably heard me call myself that in the beginning of this video. Um, I am the Chief Executive Officer of Cosmodium Cybersecurity. Yeah, these guys right here. Uh, that's me, if you couldn't, if you couldn't see. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, um, I'm a security educator, I do malware, and uh, I'm most notably a YouTuber. You're probably watching this on YouTube when you should go over to our website and take the course on the website. You don't even have to wait for the videos to upload because these videos are gonna come out every like day but on the website, all the videos are already there for you to watch. I promise you, the website's worth it. Um, but yeah, if you want to learn a little, more, a little bit more about me, definitely uh, check out these socials. Um, we also have a Discord linked in the description of the YouTube video. Um, if you want to check us out on Discord. Um, but yeah, regardless, let's actually you know jump into the course. So, what are the requirements? What are the requirements? What do I need to know? What are the things I need to learn? Uh, so, first, we had our introduction to cybersecurity course. Take it. It's like 30 minutes. It's easy. It teaches you everything. Every every single thing. <laughs> uh, no, it gives you a basic introduction to cybersecurity. Um, it kind of helps you get set for um, the course like this and um, other courses within uh, Cosmodium's domain. Uh, it's literally the easiest course on the entire website. Um, then we have Linux Fundamentals. Learn Linux. Um, if we have a Linux Fundamentals course you can take um, if you want to kind of beef up your skills, but also on the website somewhere on the YouTube channel. Um, and uh, yeah, you also need a security Linux operating system, something like Kali or Parrot will work perfectly fine. We'll be working in the terminal anyway, so we can even use something like Ubuntu as long as you have the tools and that we'll use installed. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Um, so what the heck is ethical hacking, Chris? What is it? Well, ethical hacking is basically the use of hacking to find vulnerabilities in the client system before black hat hackers do. So basically we go in, you know, we're, you know, examining the network, examining for what vulnerabilities we can find and saying, hey, this is dangerous. <laughs> and then we'll even, you know, have the ability or um, possibly have the chance to exploit those vulnerabilities and see what type of damage they could cause. And what we're doing is we're finding all these vulnerabilities so that way the client can fix them. So that way, when the black hat hacker, you know, comes and rolls onto their system that, hey, you know, they don't have to worry about as many vulnerabilities being there because those have been patched. Pretty cool. Um, so the scheduled event where a hacker actually goes to find the vulnerabilities is called an engagement. Um, so what are the different types of ethical hackers? So we have the red teamer. Red teamer is pretty popular. It's really popular within the world of um, cybersecurity. Uh, but red teamer is basically when lower level clientele is unaware of the engagement. So basically the permission for the red teamer to perform an engagement was permitted by higher level authorities. Now we're going to go over the different types of engagements in a little bit, but basically what they're saying is when you're doing a red teaming engagement, 
lower level clientele, like uh, low, sorry, lower level clientele, uh, people like the tech department, people like the front desk, people like the general employees of the company have no idea that you're allowed to test the security of the network. So that means they don't, they are unaware of the penetration test that you're performing. Um, when it comes to penetration tester, um, it's basically when lower level clientele is aware of the engagement. Um, so you're still testing the security, but basically you you perform a scan on the network and you'll say, hey, um, were you able to detect the scan? How much noise was this making? Whatever, whatever, whatever. And you're basically kind of working with the um, clientele to kind of fix the security. Now, with these terms, they are interchanged. Uh, they can be the same thing sometimes. They can be two different things sometimes. They are used intertwined a lot. Uh, but for the sake of this course, um, you can kind of easily identify them as such, All right? Awesome. So let's talk about the different types of engagements. Um, the first type is a physical engagement, and it's when you are physically testing the security of a client. Uh, so you show up to a location and you are basically acting, acting as a, you know, black hat hacker. Uh, you are breaking in and finding vulnerabilities on the client. Um, so you would be, but because you're ethical, um, you can't actually break anything, hence the quotes. Um, so you would like pick locks, um, you would like disassemble gates, disassemble doors to enter, um, and then, you know, get physical access to your client. Um, digital. So digital, uh, digital engagement is basically when you're remotely testing the security of a client. So instead of being physically showing up to the location of the server, and breaking in and seeing how easy it is to break into. Um, as a digital, you're basically doing it remotely. So basically you'd be targeting something like a website, for example, and targeting a web server, website, web server, um, and basically testing the security of that. You're you know going through, you're trying to find um, you know what directories there are on the website, um, any like vulnerabilities, what ports are open. You'll learn literally all of, if you are confused on anything I'm saying, you're fine because you're gonna learn what all of that means throughout this course, it's pretty epic. Um, the last type of engagement is the institutional engagement. Uh, this type of engagement is very popular. Um, if you've seen like Jason E Street, for example, um, he's pretty popular for institutional types of engagements. And it's basically when you are testing the vulnerabilities within the organization itself. So rather than testing the security of, you know, let's say like the actual, some sort of digital good or physical location per se, um, what you're doing is you're kind of testing the like organization itself. So like social engineering, um, you're doing a lot of seeing like how easy it is to get past the front desk, um, how easy it is to plug some sort of USB into computers and such. Um, while the physical engagement is like to act as the black hat, like um, getting, getting remote access and all that other such. Um, this is more of a teaching moment to the um, clientele and such. Cool, so what are the five stages of a hack? You probably learned about this in the cybersecurity course, but I wanna quickly go over it because it's super important um, in the world of cybersecurity. You actually probably should memorize this um, because you will need to know it if you want to enter the cybersecurity um, career uh, area. But yeah, so reconnaissance, that's when we're gaining information on the target. This is one of the most important factors. If you're working the government, you might be doing this for months, like probably three months of just pure reconnaissance on the target. Um, just to build up that profile and, you know, um, all that is pretty interesting. Um, so then we also have scanning and enumeration, right? Uh, basically, we're obtaining a blueprint of the network. Um, scanning is kind of obtaining that blueprint of the network, while enumeration is actually um, checking for vulnerabilities within that said network. Um, and using that, we can actually gain access. Gaining access is also known as exploitation, where we're exploiting some sort of vulnerability to gain access to a system. Um, and, you know, hacking is essentially just gaining unauthorized access to a system. Um, so gaining access, right, getting access to that target, maintaining access is making sure that we can keep that access, we can escalate and do anything else. Um, and then the last stage is covering your tracks, right, kind of clean up and removing the traces of your presence in the network. So that is the five stages of the ethical hack. So let's talk about legal stuff, because of course this is ethical hacking, we're doing it legally. Um, so to keep engagements legal, um, clients can create something called a scope. Um, and the scope or rules of the engagement is basically a limitation on what we can do and what we can't do, or what can we can target and what we cannot target. Um, so let's say if there's a website um, and say their scope is we can attack any of 
their mailing related services or any of their shopping related services, but we can't touch their blog page or their uh, videos area just because they don't need, um, I mean, that's up to the client if they don't want that type of thing being exploited. Um, so scope is basically what, you know, what limitations we have as a hacker. Um, so if we aren't allowed to interact with other customers, for example, or if we aren't allowed to interact with uh, janitors or front desk or whatever um, limitations that they can put on us during the engagement is up to the client and we will have to make do with it. Um, because that is how it works. We, you know, we are doing it for the client. The client gets to set the rules and the boundaries. Um, we must also understand, you know, that we are hacking with ethical intentions. Uh, so we do have a lot of things like legal documents in mind. Uh, first thing is the de-escalation policy. Uh, this is one of the most important uh, documents within your, you know, career as a ethical hacker. Uh, basically, it ensures your safety as an ethical hacker in the event you get caught during engagement, right? Um, ensures the clientele that hey, you are authorized to be performing the engagement. You are not a malicious threat. So let's say if you are a red team or doing a physical engagement and a security guard catches your ass for doing you know, dumb stuff on a uh, you know, network and stuff, you get caught you know, trying to plug in USBs and stuff. Um, basically, it's saying, hey, uh, I'm actually supposed to be here. I have permission to be testing the security of your network, but you did a good job because you caught me. You're supposed to get caught for the record. As an ethical hacker, your job is to make it a teaching moment for the clientele and saying, hey, you shouldn't have let me pass the front desk without authorization. You should have just believed everything I said without getting um, information on who I was or anything like that. Um, so yeah, de de-escalation policy, super important. Uh, NDA, uh, also known as the non-disclosure agreement. Basically, it's saying that you can't share any sensitive information related to the engagement uh, with any person or entity or anything. Um, so if you hacked, let's say if you had an engagement for Google, you couldn't even say you did the engagement for Google. You couldn't say what vulnerabilities you found because you're putting the company at risk by sharing those vulnerabilities, right? Yeah, so sharing any information about the engagement is gonna actually have severe co uh, consequences uh, for you, the client, the company you work for. And also like if you share information about the vulnerabilities, because let's say if Google, right? You did a penetration test for Google and they have um, some sort of major vulnerability within Google Docs. Um, now, if you just go out saying, hey, there's this big vulnerability in Google Docs, then you're putting Google at risk. Um, so by having the NDA, it ensures their safety as a client so they have time to fix the vulnerability before um, it can get leaked and become dangerous and anything of the such. Um, so let's talk about some reporting stuff, reporting. Um, so basically, after an ethical hacker performs an engagement, uh, we have to write up a report about the vulnerabilities discovered and how they were discovered. Um, reports will typically include uh, different things like security flaws and vulnerabilities that we discovered, uh, what the client did well, um, the output of scans and how we discover vulnerabilities. Yeah, so um, when you do things like scans and such, which we will show you guys how to do later, um, you need to save your output for pretty much everything you do because you need to show how exactly you found the vulnerability. You can't just say, I did a scan here and I found this. No, you have to show what scan, what commands you wrote, the output of the commands, um, what specific sections, whatever. Um, we can actually examine this example report. This is created by the Cyber Mentor. Definitely check him out. I linked his YouTube right here. He is an amazing YouTuber and he made this uh, example report off of cybersecurity um, reporting. And I would like to go over it in this course and kind of show you guys the outline of what the typical report looks like um, within the security field, right? So this is, of course, a demo, you know, demo company um, security assessments findings report, right? Created by, of course, the Cyber Mentor TCM. Um, this is confidential, and it kind of just shows, like, hey, this is kind of what the report would look like. Uh, so first is the confidentiality. Oh my God, confidentiality statement, basically like the NDA, right? This is business information. Of course, there's a disclaimer saying, hey, this is. Um, all the findings here are regarding to the time of the engagement, right? Uh, then, of course, there's contact information for important people who were involved in the engagement, right? Earlier, I mentioned lower level clientele and higher level clientele and like the relations to the knowledge of the engagement, right? Lower level clientele may not know about the engagement. So we'll have to have the higher level clientele who was involved and knowledgeable of the engagement um, located here. Uh, so assessment overview kind of talk about, you know, the date and time of when the engagement was permit or 
conducted and you can also list information about um, what was done, what was about, all this other stuff because this is where you're basically reporting to the client on what you found. Um, you can even do like all the components, so all the external pen tests, severity ratings, um, even check out the scope, of, right? So those scope and limitations that you weren't allowed to touch, right? For example, um, the assessment, so external penetration test, these were the only things that they were allowed to an analyze in their um, scope. They can even attach other files and say, hey, uh, we have this external file that has more information for our report. Um, so things like that. You can also have the executive summary kind of talking about uh, summarizing a lot of the um, information on like regarding the executive side of the uh, engagement, um, even talking about security strength. It's also really important to talk about security strength uh, because you need to talk about what they did good, right? You can't just go in and start, you know, criticizing the client for how bad their security is because you know we're here to help them um talk about what they're doing good talk about what they need to keep doing because if you had any like problem with your engagement you need to, you need to let them know what they are doing well um and what they're doing good uh, so that is super important um also you can cover things like security weaknesses as well and uh basically about what those security weaknesses are which are basically the vulnerabilities right uh like weak passwords uh, there was no multi-factor authentication um you had unrestricted login attempts which means brute forcing was made a little bit easier um you can even measure the vulnerabilities by impact and see hey what vulnerabilities were the most critical versus the least critical um here then you can actually talk about the penetration testing findings right so you can kind of talk about you know, the proof of concepts you use to actually break into um, or exploit those vulnerabilities to gain access. And here you can see there are outputs of scans, right? Uh, something you want to do is if you save your scans, save the output, uh, you can just output them into like a black and white text file and, you know, take screenshots or just paste them in here. Um, or if you have a white tor terminal format, like I have like um, basically uh, a profile called paper and it's basically a more black and white formatted um, terminal. So when I'm doing like certain scans and stuff, um, it's a little bit of a cleaner look. Um, but it's all up to you in a kind of how for you to decide um, how you want to perform um, reporting and such. Uh, but reporting is super important, right? Um, you can also talk about remediation, basically just talking about the actions and such. Um, but yeah, so that's basically talking about the basic kind of type of report you'll see um, within the security field. Right? Reporting is super important uh, because you're, that's what you're doing. You're working to create that report to help the client find what they are doing wrong. Um, awesome. So that is basic reports or that's a basic report. Oh my gosh. That is a basic report created by the Cyber Mentor. Again, definitely check him out. He's one of the most critical, influential faces within the world of cybersecurity. Now, um, that is going to be it for this first episode. Next, um, I guess the next section we'll cover is passive reconnaissance. Um, but until then, um, make sure to leave a like on this video, subscribe, and definitely check out cosmoliancs.com slash courses so you can take the rest of this course for free. Uh, we will have other videos being uploaded to the channel for you guys to watch. However, uh, you guys can quickly, more quickly access it on the website. Um, anyways, thank you so much for watching. I uh, definitely appreciate you guys and your support. And uh, yeah, stay happy, stay positive. And as always, happy hacking. Hey hackers, Blue Cosmo from CCS here, and I wanted to introduce you guys to the Happy Hacker Site Plan. The Happy Hacker Site Plan is a plan where you guys can support us for only $1 a month. That's right, $1. With this comes exclusive benefits like courses, articles, videos, and access to our entire cybersecurity knowledge base. Um, if this interests you and you guys want to um, get access to all this, check out the link in the description. It's only $1, so we definitely appreciate your guys' support. Um, anyway, enjoy the video and uh, happy hacking.